Well, hello friends. Welcome back to Dishing Out. You know, hard though it may be to believe, it's almost March. And that means that it's been almost two months since I, and I'm sure many of you, endeavored to make some personal change commitments. I know, most people call them resolutions, but I thought maybe if I called them something different, I'd be more likely to stick with them. Well, of the 27 that I made, I've forgotten most of them. And of the ones that I do remember, albeit uh, vaguely, I've struggled to keep them. But there have been a handful that I've stuck to pretty well. First, I wanted to eat less meat. Secondly, I wanted to eat more healthfully. Third, I wanted to spend less money on food and groceries. And finally, I wanted to plan my meals and cook in such a way that I had leftovers for lunch to eat during the week so that I wasn't eating out quite so much. So if, like me, you've come into the new year a little like this. New year, new me. New year, new me. Well, just know you're not alone. And I'm not Dr. Phil or Dr. Oz or any of those overpaid hacks on TV, so take my advice with a grain of coarse kosher sea salt. But I don't think you need to wait for a new year, a new month, or even a new special date to make some changes and develop some better habits in your life. So if you're trying to do any of the things that I just mentioned, hang out for just a little bit. We're going to make something that, eh, it may not sound all that exciting, but if it tastes great, and if it's incredibly versatile, and it's good for you, who the heck cares what you call it? You ought to try it. Let's make some vegetable soup. This vegetable soup recipe is super simple, and it's going to come together like that. So while I've got your attention here for just a moment, can we have a brief talk about knife skills? Thank you. First off, you need a good sharp chef's knife. I have this incredibly sexy Miyabi Birchwood uh, chef's knife, but you don't need anything quite this fancy, although it doesn't hurt. I've actually dropped a couple links in the description down below to some accessible, affordable, really good quality knives. So if you're in the market for one, check it out. The first step is to hold the knife properly. And that's going to begin by using your thumb and your pointer finger and pinching right there in front of the handle. You take your other three fingers, wrap them around, and now, look at me. I'm the chef now. I'm in control of this knife. The second component is your offhand here, the hand you're holding your food with. Take your second and four fingers and put your middle finger right over the top and curl them back in so that you can rest the edge of the knife against your knuckle and you don't risk cutting yourself. From there, it's all about letting the knife do the work. It takes a little bit of practice, but hey, the good news is we got a lot of chopping to do for this soup. So let's get to it. Begin by taking four stalks of celery, slicing them in half right down the middle, going back through, cutting them into about quarter inch dice. Once you've got all four stalks diced up, find a nice large work bowl and relocate the celery thusly. Cut one large white onion right down the middle and go ahead and take off the stem end. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to peel it because no one eats onion peels. Once you've done that, and I think we've done this before, you're gonna go back longitudinally through that onion, cutting in quarter inch slices. Once you've gone all the way through one way, Go ahead and flip it 90 degrees and go back through the other way again at about quarter inch intervals to give a nice even dice. Once you're done with your onion, go ahead and get it into the bowl, maybe feed a little bit to your dog as he watches, and onto the carrots. Take the tops and bottoms off, and I like to slice off one edge on the carrot to give myself a nice flat work surface. Go ahead and cut it into quarter inch planks, and then take those planks and cut them in half or in thirds depending on the size of the carrot and then go back through your carrot sticks, sound like a broken record, in a quarter inch dice. Go ahead and get the carrot into your work bowl, and it's time for everyone's favorite allium, garlic. Let's go ahead and smash up four good sized cloves and get those minced up pretty fine. Finally, one russet, skin on please, 
Go ahead and take off a little edge there again to get that nice flat work surface. And this time we're going to go in half inch slices, which I'm then going to stack up and cut in thirds just to get a nice thick french fry shape. And then back through the other way in roughly half inch cubes. There you are, prep work is done. With our prep work out of the way, let's get to cooking. Take the largest pot that you have, go ahead and put that over medium heat, and get in there with a good tablespoon or two of olive oil. We're going to grab our mirepoix. Yes, it's a French word, but it just means it's a mixture of celery, carrots, and onions. It's a classic flavor base to pretty much any soup out there. That's going right into our oil. along with a good crack of pepper. And of course, a heavy pinch of kosher salt. We're gonna sweat these vegetables for about 10 to 15 minutes until they have softened and the onions are translucent. We don't really wanna color them, we just wanna start cooking them, so medium is uh, plenty of heat. While our mirepoix sautés, let's take a look at the remaining ingredients. I have here one can of chickpeas or garbanzo beans, one can of butter beans, but you could use any kind of beans you want or omit them all together, two cups of water, the potatoes and garlic from before, one large can, this one's 28 uh, ounces of diced tomatoes, one six ounce can of tomato paste, about a tablespoon of fresh oregano leaves, a few sprigs of fresh thyme, and four cups of veggie broth. After your mirepoix has sweated for about 10 to 15 minutes and the onions and celery are getting a little bit uh, soft, go ahead and go in with the garlic. Saute that for a couple of minutes until it's fragrant. And now let's go in with that whole can of tomato paste. I like to go ahead and turn my heat up to medium high here and really work that tomato paste in all through the veggies and you know, let it burn a little bit on the bottom. That's flavor right there. We're gonna deglaze that delicious flavor with some water, two cups, and the rest of our liquid, the veggie stock. We're also gonna to wanna to stir everything and even scrape the bottom of the pan to get any little brown good bits up. Now, the rest of the ingredients. The tomatoes go in. The beans with their liquid, please. Adds nice texture and richness to the uh, soup. Along with the chickpeas, same thing. Liquid as well, please. And now, it's time for our fresh thyme. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, no need to take it off the stem, just throw it right in. Same thing with your oregano. And of course, we're gonna need to season this with a good fresh crack of black pepper and a heavy pinch of kosher salt. Season along the way as you cook and your final dish will come out properly seasoned. Oh, and uh, yes, we need a bay leaf. I completely forgot to mention that, so I'm mentioning it now. One bay leaf goes in, you uh, can't make soup without it. After about 30 to 40 minutes, when all the vegetables are nice and soft and the liquid's reduced just a little bit, it's time to taste for seasoning. Oh there, watch that hair, buddy. Hmm, pretty good, but I think it needs a pinch more salt. At this point, the only thing we have left to do is get our potatoes in. We're gonna go ahead and let those simmer away for about 10 to 15 minutes until they're just barely cooked through, but uh, we don't want them falling apart. Once the potato pieces themselves are uh, fork tender, you're uh, pretty much done. At this point, go ahead and kill the heat. And uh, I like to work in a nice bunch of freshly chopped parsley. It's definitely optional, but it adds a really nice bright color and flavor to the final product. Oh, and uh, yeah, let's get those bay leaves out. Nobody wants to chomp down on that. And also, you can fish out those thyme stems do that as well. There you go, vegetable soup. All right, well, let's give this a try, shall we? Oh, it's so good. You know, aside from being delicious, one of my favorite things about this Mm. is how satisfying it is. You don't miss the beef or meat or anything like that at all. On top of that, it's almost endlessly versatile. You could put any kind of beans, black-eyed peas, green beans, 
fresh greens like kale. You could even make it with water if you didn't have any vegetable stock and I'm sure it would still come out amazing. On top of all that, it can be tailored to fit any diet from gluten-free, vegan, vegetarian, paleo, keto, blue zone, whatever you're on, it's there for you. It's phenomenal, it's a keeper, it's a winner, and you know, whatever other useless platitudes you can think of to throw out there. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope you're enjoying season two so far and all the other episodes. Uh, I haven't asked in a while, so I gotta say, if you are enjoying, drop a like on the video, leave me some comments down below, or even some questions, I'd love to answer them. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, you better hurry up and do that, and click that bell so you'll get notifications and won't be left out when I am dishing out again, which, by the way, is every Monday at 7.30. Thanks so much for watching, and until I see you next week, go make something delicious.